Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconnan, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Tommy Lackey Jr. on the line, founding partner and CIO of the Barber Lackey Financial Group. Tommy, how you doing this morning? Doing great, guys. How are y'all doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. Thanks for uh, joining the show today, joining in the chat. We've got a lot of tickers to talk about here. Uh, but just, um, you know, you, you do your scans. I know you don't want to give away your secret sauce, but uh, can you just tell us a little bit what goes in, into your scans? Sure. And it's, again, the only secret sauce part is the actual formula of my calculation, but I've derived a very short-term relative strength calculation. It's a three-month that basically allows me to adapt relative strength uh, assessments to more swing trading and things that are more reactive. Most relative strengths are much more six month, a year longer, and that's to get the larger trends, and I like to get closer to the turns. And uh, this allows me to identify those uh, better, and I've just divided them into different universes for different purposes that uh, lets me, again, narrow the focus on what I'm actually looking at, figuring out who's the strongest and who's the weakest out of this batch. So how, and uh, that helps a lot. So typically, you know, how long are your trades for? What's the duration of your trades? Well, I have two different setups. I mean, I do have, like I said, a legacy type. Most of my client business and a lot of that business is anywhere from a week to two or three years if I can hold it that long. <laughs> I believe in stages. Um, I, I move them up stages as they work. I buy them as short term, but then once I look and start seeing the, say, the weekly chart starts really shaping up, if I'm still in there, then I'll move to using that weekly chart as my signal as to whether I want to stay in or exit. And it give myself a little more room. It's a way to uh, technically give myself cushion once the trade's working. Okay. All right. So let's go into some stuff that uh, popped in your scans last night. And uh, let's start with Facebook. That's a popular stock. Day traders, okay. a lot of volume. Uh, had a big move last week. I believe that was attributed to um, instant articles that uh, people mm -hmm. that uh, the streets liking. Now here you're running into some resistance here. It looks just under the eighty-two dollar level. Three days of uh, consolidation after the big move up. What are you looking for in Apple? Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah, yeah. That actually came off my a new scan I'm doing, which is just a weekly option scan, which is just of the companies that have weekly options. Again, allowing for a very short-term focus. Um, this one popped up on it in the gainer side, meaning it's making some moves. Um, last week's move, that just kind of directs me to it. And then I look at this real quickly and see, like you said, that 82 level. And then I look at that 79.90 level. And actually, since the markets are fairly strong and that's above the moving average clusters uh, in that area, what I would do is I would kind of look for a purchase on either side. If it breaks over 82, great. We try to play a breakout play. If it doesn't and it comes down to test that uh, middle Bollinger Band at 79.90 or so, even if it breaks through it a little bit, I'll watch it for a little while because if it comes back above it quickly, that's a great place to get in too. It's kind of like y'all talk a lot about Scott Riddler's um, mm -hmm. RDRs. Um, right. You talk about his trades, his uh, Red, Red Dog, dog reversal. Reversals. Yep. It's, yeah. it's a similar idea when you're playing a range like this that says, okay, it tried to break the range, but they couldn't keep it down there. So why don't we enter here, especially if we're playing short-term options, why don't we enter here and then basically try to roll the option up and get all our money out by the time it gets back to the top side? Again, we play a short-term play. We can put very little money in it. If it does work for us and it reverses back up to the top side of that range, then we try to roll the option up and out, get all our premium out, and now we can play for that breakout without a whole lot of risk. Yeah, another thing I'm noticing here uh, in Facebook, one of the things I like to keep an eye on, uh, you made the all-time high at 86.07. Then you came down basically to the $77 level, 76.79, call that a nine-point move. Take half of that, 81 and a half is uh, the 50% area. So and there you go. You have the last four highs right at that area from mm -hmm. 81.38 to 81.85. So, um, you know, if it, it's pulling back now, it might get a chance to buy it on weakness. But uh, yeah, if it could clear that, break into that 82 handle, looks like you have some clear sale at least up to 83. So great breakdown on that one. Um, stock I'm not too familiar with here. A 
AFSI. Give us your yeah. Page. It's a it's a smaller financial. It's not one a lot of people know. It's in one of my larger universes um, that I do all my breath work on. Um, but it caught my eye just because as it's been continuing to stay pretty strong. It's an insurance company, which insurance has been doing pretty well recently. Um, it has a short float of almost 17%. Um, and then when you, if you do a qu quick click into my scans and see it in there, I have Finviz links to everything. So you can look over there real quick, and its numbers are pretty darn good. It's got a forward PE of 10, uh, current PE of 10, um, a dividend of 1.6. I mean, just a really solid little play that looks like it could be breaking out up here and getting ready to head towards those highs after it held. It, it, it overshot the uh, previous breakout a little bit, but again, that's even better. People hate when they overshoot those breakout back tests. I love it because if it comes back above it again, you've got a really strong support now to put your stop at. Okay. Also on your scanner, uh, Jazz Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. I mean, last time I talked to y'all, I think last two times I talked to y'all, I said don't give up on biotech. you got to play the run. Um, biotech and many other sectors hit breadth lows and somewhat extremes at the beginning of May and have done nothing but move higher since. Um, that's one of the reasons I like to follow those breadth numbers all the way down into the subsectors just because I can figure out which one exactly hits the lows and when they hit it. And I know y'all were talking about retail earlier. That's another area that a lot of places hit those breadth lows in the early May at the beginning of May, and we've been running up ever since, and that's been giving me a lot of confidence under this strength while everybody else and a lot of people out there have really doubted it. What about Biogen here? Uh, that has not popped here. It uh, made the low, uh, the recent low at the under three. Well, how low did we get? We got into the 370s yeah. there. We got the mm -hmm. 368.88. Uh, just hitting a brick wall here at the $400 level. Is this one going to play catch up soon? Well, I think it's funny, and it's it's one of those areas to where in biotech especially, I just really don't care. Um, I know everybody cares about the big guy and to make sure the big guy's there, but that's not really what this industry is about right now. This industry right now is about the new change, the new stuff that's coming out, the companies that are really doing groundbreaking stuff. And that's why, again, a lot of people are looking at IBB and are, are running it back and forth for the ETF, I would rather look at XBI because it's an equal weighted. So that way, if you do have a big blow up in one of these little companies, it's only 1% of the fund. But if it goes up 50 to 100%, you're going to start getting some chunks in there, and we both know that's going to drag other biotechs up if it starts hitting those. And so, again, to play most of your focus on the large biotechs, I'm not sure is the right way to focus it. That's a perfect sector to be looking at breadth and things like that in because these smaller companies are really the ones making the change. All right, Illumnia here. Boy, oh boy, this thing is knocking on the door here. Made a high at 202.88 yesterday. Go back uh, to uh, April here. You made a high and in a similar area at 20. See here, 202.85. You had a high yesterday at 202.88. You have another double top here. Oh, that's a little bit higher. That's up here in the 203s. What are you looking at in ILMN? Well, again, I'm a, I favor this company a lot. I think it's hard to buy right here until it either breaks out cleanly or it goes sideways for a bit. But I love the company above all the MAs. I just sat there and talked about all the great things about small biotechs. And here's a large one that I'd have to say I do still like a lot. Uh, probably shows how much of a chart guy I am because this chart has, yes, waffled around. But it's just look at that weekly and it's still rock solid. And uh, its RSI is right back at 60. So it looks like it's about ready to go again on a weekly basis. Um, it's in a solid bull range on both daily and weekly RSIs. That's one of my main keys. And so it's got all the things lined up uh, since early May. It's on balance volume has rocketed higher. And again, follow volume indicators, not volume itself, because you look at that volume pattern and you'd be like, eh, that's okay. But you see how the on balance volume is really built over that time and you get a very different picture. We got a ticker coming out of the chat here, ABM, ABM Industries here. Wow, this thing is winding up here, trading near all-time highs. Uh, what's your take on uh, ABM here? Is it ready for a breakout? Man, that thing's great looking. Yeah, I would say probably so. I don't see why not. Again, people are arguing 
as to why things can't go right here. I think you got to look the opposite. There's too much breadth, strength, and all that. You need to figure out why they can and just make sure you protect yourself. But yeah, I mean, the markets, it's set up on the daily and weekly RSI. Um, the daily MACD looks like it's turning with an MACD histogram divergence, which is even more powerful. Volume was huge yesterday. Um, you know, if they can get continuation off this out of this top, that's a great look and play. And uh, I don't think it's a, uh, let me check one more thing. Um, yeah, it, it's got uh, 11 followers on stock twits. 11. <laughs> and those are even better when no one else is paying attention to it. Okay, that's uh, uh, this very long consolidation period here. I'm looking at the uh, uh, current, uh, it, uh, going back to the consolidations before, and this is really a yeah. long one here. So, should get it. Yeah, it's awesome. And if it, if it comes back to 31 and it, it you know, shoots that area for a second and comes back up, man, that'd be a great place to enter. Because they like to shake you out right before breakouts a lot. You know that. Yep. I, and, I've been part of them. Under <laughs> Armour, UA. What's uh, what's on the radar for Under Armour? Boy, this yeah, it was is. kind of that. Y'all talked a little bit about retail. I just kind of took a look. It hit one of my scans last night um, that said, you know, hey, take a look here. And uh, right now I don't have it in front of me whether it hit a gainer's or a loser scan. I think it was back to a gainer scan. But, you know, it's one of those areas where it's pulled back to a good spot. Um it's weekly RSI is back near around 50. Daily's not great, but the MACD is turning up and crossing. Um, and again, we're in a fairly decent market. So if it can pop over that 60, 60, 15 level, um, I'm sorry, 80, 80, 15 level, looks great. You know, 80, 15 is the 50 moving average. It's still rising. Um, haven't been able to pull that down. So get back over that, and then you can play the rest of the run, probably back up towards maybe not the actual high candle, but the bottom of that actual high candle would probably be a safe bet before it really uh, gets tested a whole lot again. Yeah, they didn't did do much off earnings. They uh, were in line, a little bit of a revenue beat, and that was on the fourth. Uh, but I can see what you're talking about here. Kind of a rounding base here, but a break above 80, I think, would definitely get uh, get some of the momentum traders um, interested. Uh, taking a look here, we've covered a few of them. Uh, how about J-A-K-K? What's your take on this one? Yeah, this is one that uh, followed in the past, but it was mentioned yesterday with some Ooh. big options by yeah. uh, Options Talk. Joe Kunkel does phenomenal stuff on Twitter. Um, and it was mentioned by him, and I just took a look back at it. And it's just got a great breakout yesterday up into, don't really call it a gap, but somewhat. And, uh, you know, it gets over 8 from here or consolidates, consolidates back around 750, and I think we're, we're in a good shape. Yeah, it had a weird day back in uh, October. Uh, came mm -hmm. down real hard trying to get back in that area. Another question coming out of the chat, uh, symbol SEM. Does that have some potential? All right. Rob, I do, I do want to say something about retail before we go. So you watch the time and make sure we have time. Okay, um, yeah, SEM is very, uh, it looks like it definitely has a good solid uh, look to it. Broke out yesterday. You know, again, there the volume pattern itself is not wonderful, but you look at on balance volume, it's just continued to ratchet its way up through all this. Um, it comes out of this top right around 16. And I think Rob's got a great looking setup here. Um, but Rob does, Rob does good work. He does it on both here and stock twits a lot. Uh, 1589 was yesterday's high. The old time high in the issue is 1617. So gapping up there, Rob Hood, keep an eye on 1617. Uh, let's, uh, let's cover a few other ones here. I think that, uh, XPO, I'm not too familiar with that one. What about that? Yeah, that's a small, uh, shape, uh, freight shipper kind of guy, air delivery freight services. It caught my eye because of the little breakout it had yesterday. It's at around 50, and it has about 14 and a half, 15 percent uh, short float. I always like high short float. Yeah. Um, again, it doesn't have a wonderful uh, uh, PE or any of that fundamental stuff. It just That's a bonus for me if it's there. If it's not there, if the chart's good, you still, you still play hard. And uh, this particular chart is there. Okay, let's uh, let's before we go to the retailers here. Now you're very stock specific in your scans and stuff. So you like something like Yahoo, the move it made yesterday. Does that um, catch your attention? Yeah, it hit the loser scan, and uh, you know Yahoo's one of those things that I think you know. Looking at it, I, I saw a lot of people talking about it yesterday afternoon. Um, I think you could 
kind of look at and play here, but it's just it hit my scan is going down towards those lows. The only thing I would really want here is if it reverted back higher. You know, I personally don't have a big urge to short Yahoo here um, because there's just too many news oriented games with it. And uh, if you really want to find something to short that, I mean, I, I just, I'd rather have something that's not so news oriented. Yeah, I agree. Uh, moving on here, you, you made a comment about earnings run-ups. And um, yeah. you, know, you haven't identified anything great. I see you, you threw a couple of symbols in there. But, uh, you know, it seems like that, you know, the play for this earnings is they've been buying them up in the earnings. We'll go to Apple here. Mm -hmm. uh, they got the gap. They sold it off. Okay. Home mm -hmm. Depot, another, or Disney uh, did the same thing. Uh, that mm -hmm. had the run up. That's fighting its way back. And then uh, Home Depot, uh, bad day yesterday on it. So uh, that's been it's been a kind of a, a, a recurring theme. Do you see anything else like that? I know we're getting near. We could talk about the retailers in a second, but just that it, excessive I, run up. I think it's there more than you think. Um, it's one of the reasons I stopped playing earnings. I used to work with the guys that played earnings a lot, and I just found that the success rate was just not there. There's too much. Even if you do set up the perfect options trade, if it doesn't work, you spend a month trying to get out of it. Um, and so I would much rather try to get in some cheap weeklies a few weeks early, see if I can play that run up and get all my premium out by the time it's time to have earnings. Um, either just walk away if it is is a good run up like Apple or those guys. Uh, one here, I may be a little late on it. I would have I would have preferred to have one more week, but since we're at the end of earnings, it's kind of hard to, to to ferret that out today. But one in there I saw was uh, GameStop GME. Um, it's in a really nice tight consolidation. A lot of people don't like it. Um, it's shaping up, and it's got some decent call action in there. The call action is pretty close. It's right here at 40 and a little bit below. And the fact that we're only about six, seven days out, it's a little harder to play my run-up plays. But if you've got two weeks, let's say I caught this five days earlier and I had two weeks, I would have gone ahead and tried to buy that weekly um, and then try to uh, roll up and out. You know, basically the same thing I talked about earlier, when you buy the bottom of a uh, consolidation instead of the top breakout, you buy the bottom hold, then what you try to do is by the time it gets to its point, which here is earnings, you try to go ahead and have all your premium out if possible. Okay. Um, and I got a flurry of symbols here. I'm going to do those real quick, and then we'll go to your thoughts on the retailer. The first one is a retailer, Foot Locker, FL. Okay. Um Taking a quick look at Foot Locker, it's right there, ready to break out. It plays a lot off the Nike strength. A lot of that, when as that happens, Foot Locker is oftentimes uh, somewhat correlated there. Uh, I think it's a good area, and I don't think the U.S. consumer is dying, so I am I'm with it. <laughs> and they're and they're walking, so wearing shoes. Exactly. Okay, right. CTLT. C Charlie Tom. CTLT, yep. um, fast run up to here, but I wouldn't totally count it out. The fact that it came all the way up here straight from a bear range, an RSI bear range, to me says it might need a little time to consolidate here before it goes out. Um, and then obviously if it pulls back to that 20 SMA, which is now turning up at uh, 29.56, a pullback to there would be a wonderful potential entry if you want to uh, – uh, be again pre breakout. Yeah, look at those couple tops here, just above 31, Sheldon. I think. Yeah, you got to give it some time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on here, real quickly. BSX, Boston Scientific. I love this one. Um, love this thing. Uh, watched it for a few years since it was like eight. Uh, it just keeps going and it keeps setting up and going and setting up and going. And uh, I think you just got to keep watching it for that. Uh, again, you got a gap still open down at a little under 17. Not sure it's going to make it back there, but 17 to that gap is where yeah. I'd watch if it pulls back above the highs here at this point. Um, it, you're not in a position right now to play a pretty big breakout unless it holds, again, the middle Bollinger Band at 17.75. Final one, CCIH. CCIH. Um, China Cache International Holdings Limited. Yeah, again, same thing about to break out. China stuff's been hot. Um, I'm not against China stuff, not against any of that if the chart looks good. I know Sheldon's not. He does great work as well. Um, okay, you final guys word too? on I retailers here. We got yeah, retailers, I wanted to make the comment that I was looking at those since uh, y'all had mentioned that earlier. And that one thing you can always look at there is look at the XRT 
um, which is one of the retailer uh, ETFs, and the RTH. The XRT is equal weighted, and the RTH is cap weighted. Compare those to each other, which I did, which let me know that the large cap retailers are outperforming here, and the smaller guys are having a tougher time. So I'd favor RTH or the bigger retailers um, if you want to play in that space, unless you're looking for the catch-up plays. But your strength right now is in the larger guys. Tommy Lackey Jr., founding partner and CIO of Barber Lackey Financial Group. You just hit a bunch of symbols with excellent analysis, Tommy. Thanks for coming on. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Have a great week and uh, appreciate the time, guys.